Because the man who was in the second movie had done some other films in the uh, public distribution system. <laughs> to devote a couple of more minutes to money trade, you know, it's something very important. I feel that it's very significant, Dr. Sassana has also been mentioning about it, uh, the, all these technology supported models that all of you have been talking about, of course they ensure last mile uh, connectivity and that uh, the food range reaches, automatically it reaches the intended beneficiary, but as Biral said, technology cannot be a substitute for e-governance, if there is a, pol a political uh, will, if there is a political conspiracy to find a loophole, it will be found, and therein comes the significance of monitoring even a technology-based system. So, what, how, what, scope, what kind of scope do these uh, experimental models that are in existence right now, what kind of scope or what kind of provision do they have for monitoring? If you uh, see the judgment or the report of the panel, you know, one of the reasons why this suggestion came uh, of the privatization is uh, by taking cognizance of the lack of appropriate vigilance mechanism. So what uh, we would suggest is that yes, technology would, even if there are loopholes, there is no doubt that technology is going to reduce the extent of corruption. Obviously. Nobody is saying that technology can yeah, obviously that's what yeah, said that's too. what we said. Yeah. Now, how do you you know plug those loopholes? Mm. Loopholes can always be found, and if, if they are found in, in the most developed world uh, also, mm. what is required is that there should be a very strong vigilance mechanism monitoring mechanism and then just as we focus too much on the incentives you know the subsidy episode is one glaring example towards that we need to enforce penalties mm. okay you would not find as much discussion discourse on the mechanisms that are you know towards penalties okay. as much towards you know giving benefits to people now there is nothing wrong i mean we, we are all talking about development to the human face but at the same time, we, if we combine technology which reduces uh, corruption, but there is a possibility of uh, loopholes being mis misutilized by people, uh, you need to cap it up with a strong monetary system. And then, once somebody is caught, you know, you have to have very clear uh, penalties. Okay. So let me also add here that the facts are that none of the states yeah. have ever carried out an independent assessment okay. Okay. of their program. Okay. Government of India's last assessment was in 2003 okay. uh, by the Planning Commission which showed 58 percent leakages. Now 58 percent leakages then it was, it was incumbent that government of India should have launched more such studies to find out whether the are going up or down, mm. but they have not done any study. Okay. But so therefore, that so shows total. Even Chhattisgarh has made no attempt at assessment. Chhattisgarh does assessment on a day to day basis. Okay. What they do, but comprehensive. Not a comprehensive survey. I think I have not seen any such assessment. But they have a system by which you know there is a there is toll number. You complain, you give your complaint, yes, and then yeah. the. A motorbike runner will go to a village and find out yeah. and it will be monitored. Okay. They, they also have a system of monitoring how many complaints you receive, mm -hmm. how many uh, disposed of, etc. Yeah. and what action has been taken, all that they are doing. Okay. But uh, an mm -hmm. annual report on the on the status of mm -hmm. uh, PDS in Chhattisgarh and which which shows how well it is uh, happening. That I have not seen it. Okay. Maybe there is one, but I do have Even on leakages, yeah. the government of PU report is very faulty. Mm. Because wherever state governments have given additional cards, like Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, mm. anything additional that states were doing besides the central government quota was treated as a leakage. Okay. And which is why you have the exaggerated figure of 58% as a leakage. Okay. That was the weakness of the PU study. Okay. Subsequently, two more studies have been done, one by ORG Mark. Mm -hmm. and the other by NCAR, mm -hmm. both of which were commissioned by government of India. Okay. But these reports were uh, not uh, for across the country, but they took, the ORG Mark study took about seven states and the NCAR took about eight or, uh, six or seven states again. I don't remember the exact number. Uh, and one of the reasons, it's and this is not something about the PDS, this is about all centrally sponsored schemes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would go so far. There are problem states like UP and Bihar where many systems do not work or in Central India or Eastern India. 
But by and large, I would say that it is the absolute lack of vision, it's the absolute lack of political will, and the absolute desire to reform the uh, social sector of the government of India, which is largely responsible for the mess that we are in. Mm. Uh, when government of India is spending 3 lakh crores on just one set of subsidies, it, uh, taken all the subsidies that are given to, uh, to the states, it would exceed the six, six and a half lakh crores. Why can't we spend even one percent of this on monitoring and evaluation? Yeah. The global benchmark on monitoring and evaluation for development programs so, so is much higher. So then, but the government of India does not do the it. The two models that you talked about yes. in such detail, the Chhattisgarh and the East for the yeah. model, what kind of provision do these models have for monitoring? Well, they, you know, these are two separate issues. Mm -hmm. These models are are robust enough okay. because you are having uh, you know the, the, the card holder mm -hmm. is actually going there and putting his fingerprint and the system can only be activated by his or her fingerprint. Mm -hmm. If you don't put the if you don't do a biometric last mile authentication, mm -hmm. the system will not activate itself. Mm -hmm. That is the day-to-day -day monitoring. What I meant about monitoring was really monitoring in the sense of monitoring and evaluation. Okay. This government, for instance, they, there was a promise that we we'll set up an independent evaluation office mm -hmm. which, under the PMO, in the planning commission, with a minister ranked person heading it. That's I didn't know where. Mm -hmm. Four years have passed since this discussion has been going on. I, I think they have lost the will to create this independent evaluation no, office. No, but but so, Viraj, I believe that, that essentially is the riddle. That uh, you have to uh, think about evolving ways that will fight a lack of political will. But you see, if, if you have a government that is completely paralyzed, mm -hmm. you know, this government has only begun acting mm -hmm. in whatever direction they have been acting in the last four, five months. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, there has been a policy paralysis. And this is well acknowledged. Yeah. There is a government no, that is there, not There is a, da a danger of all governments falling into that trap. No, I think, I government, think governments will be either corrupt or paralyzed. Or well, there, 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 there could be lack of political, political and welfare schemes. A government which is spending so much of money, yeah. that shows that government at least is, has the desire to ensure uh, the scheme is working. Mm. Otherwise, why would government give 60,000 crore subsidy? It mm. is really sad that we are spending 60,000 crores on this scheme or 3 lakh crores on subsidies. It shows that at least there is some desire on the part of government of India. But government of India is not uh, ensuring that these benefits reach the people because they are not doing monitoring, they are not doing evaluation. That is the problem. And one of the reasons why they don't do evaluation is that the security in the uh, Ministry of Food and Food Supply will think if the evaluation is done, it will show a lot of corruption and there will be a lot of parliament questions. So why should I take initiative? That is the whole problem. So therefore, they are trying to put the problem, uh, uh, you know, brush the problem under the carpet. Uh, and they are not blaming yeah, on the states. Blaming on the states. And look, the states are responsible for PDF, we are not concerned. Mm. But we are spending 60,000 crores, yeah. which is not a small sum. Yeah. That is why it is incumbent upon government of India to do evaluation and then call the states and show them the report, put it on the website, let civil society also discuss it. That's how it should be done. Okay. But that's, yeah, but I mean, I, I do um, understand the sentiments expressed, but I also see that the recent measures that have been taken by the government, and, and I'm not a political scientist, I, I'm just looking at it from an economist's point of view, the recent attempts uh, in the larger context of addressing agricultural issues, food security, distribution, even this report that you are having discussion on, if you see, the trends are, that the government is very serious about reducing corruption. Mm. So, direct cash transfer, uh, building infrastructure, uh, you know, through multi no, brand, the, brand retail. This report that uh, we are talking about, this was commissioned by the Supreme Court and not the government. Uh, and, yes. and in hearing the special bench of the Supreme Court, they have rather lambasted the government. No, but, but you are forcing us to enter into your domain. No, Why don't you take care of things? No, let us, let us not uh, see the judiciary and the executive uh, as two separate entities where one tries to prevail on the other. Mm -hmm. There is an interlinkage and there, there is going to be an interlinkage always. 
So when the government is failing, there is a role for judiciary. Otherwise, why would you have it? And when judiciary comes into action, the government also takes cognizance of that. That's the point that I'm trying to make. The judiciary is not the government. It is not the government. It's a part of the state. But yes. it is not the government. It is not the government. But the, can you dismiss the interlinkage between these two separate uh, parallel processes? That will always be there. Yes, sometimes, you know, inaction of one would result in action by other and there will be actions and reactions. That is, that is fine. But the point is that the the direct uh, cash uh, you know transfer scheme mm. is also aimed at uh, reducing corruption and i'm not saying that it is the panacea for everything it is going to you know, address all the ills that are, that surround the you know the, the subject mm. my simple point is that just by blaming the government mm. always mm. we take a, an easy way out not to blame ourselves mm. who are corrupt people it is public at large. You know, there, there might be a small shop, there might be a government servant, there might be a small private unit. Everybody is freedom corrupt. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing is that we need to realize that we all need to change. Yeah. And everybody wants that change. Mm -hmm. It is just that the chemistry between the state, the judiciary, the people at large, the academia, the think tanks, private and public, Someday this chemistry will throw up a system which would be much better than what we have done. So for that, I find it hard to agree with that because you know, after all, how can you not blame this government? I mean, look at the performance of this government. Forget social sector reforms. This was not on their priority. This was not on their agenda. Mm -hmm. But look at the issue of fiscal deficit. Look at the way the economy is going. Look at where the rupee is today. Look at any economic indicator that the, this government has prioritized from day one of its existence. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find that we are pretty much hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. If we come to the social sector indicators, we have always been rock bottom. You know, it's not a question of a glass half full or a glass half empty. Mm -hmm. The acknowledgement that we have a long way to go is, you know, uh, some of these changes require political courage. And that political courage is missing. Mm -hmm. Social sector reforms are harder than uh, uh, reforms in, uh, say, the financial services sector or in industry. Mm -hmm. Because social sector reforms require you to be with a large number of constituents, mm -hmm. not individuals. I'll give you a small example. In Punjab, now most of the procurement is done by middlemen. Mm -hmm. And all the food corporation India wanted to do was to say that, look, we will convert this into a check payment, mm -hmm. where whatever is the middleman's commission, we are not talking about eliminating the RTI mm -hmm. or the middleman. Mm -hmm. All they were saying is, we will give this commission by check to the middleman, and we will give a check to the farmer mm -hmm. of the amount that he has the middleman has paid to buy him. Mm -hmm. Now, they passed an order, within two months they took it back. Because there was so much overwhelming pressure from not just the RTR, not just the, but the Punjab government prevailed on FCI mm -hmm. to withdraw this order. This is what two and a half years, three years back. Okay. Now, that is my point. Mm -hmm. That if you don't have the political courage to undertake reforms, mm -hmm. this is the kind of system you end up with. Okay. I will come to you, Dr. Sena, for your defense on that. On that one, it's time for a very short break to come back.